Luke 12. I asked uh, Jake if he wanted me to bring anything tonight. I know I'm late. And uh, he told me just to bring the wonderful gift of myself. So yeah. <laughs> I'm bestowing that upon you. Luke, Luke 12, 15. Man, it's good to see everybody. I'm, I'm glad I, I'm, what I heard was awesome. I, I, I don't know who all I missed, um, but that was good stuff. And I'm glad to see this going on. That's, that, is, that makes my heart skip a beat. I'm glad to see everybody getting together, fellowshipping, still preaching, still doing everything the way it's supposed to be done. Luke chapter 12, look at verse 15. Uh, the Bible reads, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. possesseth. The title of my sermon is Minimalism in Light of the Bible. A, a while ago, I had put together a full message on minimalism. Now, I'm not talking about a fad. I know that the secular world does this fad of minimalism, and that's, that's cool for them. I'm talking about how it pertains to a Christian. Uh, Jesus said, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He, he wasn't somebody that dazzled everybody with how much he had. He had very little. And, and I would urge the Christian to take it a step further. And it's not that, I don't think minimalism in the sense of, for instance, Jake has a beautiful house that he should sell everything he has and he should go into a little tiny home. That's not what I'm preaching at. What I'm preaching at is where you're going to put your value, what you're putting your value, value in. And um, in this verse, I want to reread that. In verse 15, it says, He said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness. The root problem of consumerism is covetousness. Consumerism is what's killing the Christian today. It's what's killing, really, the world today. It's, it's driving us all in debt. Uh, people are spending way more than they are ever making. Uh, but as Christians, we're taking that on in the Christian world, and not just the, the sense we're buying material things, brand names, and stuff like that, but we're almost taking the symbology of, Chris, uh, uh, of Christianity. And our Lord is becoming more of a label to us. And I'm not talking, preaching lordship salvation or any of that. What I'm saying is like, for instance, the new IFB has become more of a label. And we, get, we, we start investing and in putting so much value in the label of it than the actual worth of what's behind it, the soul winning and what made people special. And I would urge the Christian to go back to the meaningful things, the things that added value to our life and the things that added value to the Lord. And beware of covetousness, wanting something else that somebody else has. For a man's life, watch this, consisteth not in the abundance of things, just the things you accumulate, all this stuff you can have, which he possesseth. That's not where a man's life consists. And some people live for their things. And instead of them owning their things, their things own them. That's a, that's a huge problem. So I'm going to kind of touch a, a couple of my highlights I had in my message. Um, uh, but I'm going to read a couple things that I just found online about consumerism. It says, in 1930, the average American woman owned nine outfits. Nowadays, the average American woman owns 30. 25% of those who have two-car garages don't have space to park their cars, which, by the way, I think this was in the 90s, so it's way worse now, uh, a score later. Since the early 2000s, or actually, this would be in 2000s. In the early 2000s, the home organized industry has doubled in size. It now sees an annual earning of $8 billion. In the last 50 years, the average American home size has tripled. So here's the thing. If you look at people when they're getting married, they're having way less children, yet their home size is tripling. So are they, are they buying more stuff to accumulate what they need? No, they're buying more stuff to show it off because their covetousness has crept in and they're starting to have the abundance of things like that verse talked about. Each year, the average American throws away 65 pounds of clothing. They're not giving it away. They're throwing it away. They're wasting. An average child will accumulate 238 toys by the time they're 10 years old and only play with about 12 of them. 12. Researchers have found that present-day Americans purchase twice as many material goods as they did 50 years ago. 60% of private consumption worldwide is done by 12% of the world. Guess where they live? North America. In the U.S., there are more malls than high schools. The average, the average person will spend 3,680 hours, that's 153 days or five months of their lives, looking for misplaced items. The most frequent items are phone, keys, sunglasses, paperwork. We spend more time looking for our stuff that we don't need 
than we do probably. Uh, has the have, has the average Christian spent, you know, now I'm not talking, you guys are Bible readers, but the average Christian, let's say, have they spent 3,680 hours of their time reading their Bible? They spent that looking for their stuff that they didn't need to begin with. Almost half of American households are not saving, nor do they even have a savings account. And most ha- households have more television sets than they do people. There's a problem. The problem's consumerism. The Bible warns, beware of covetousness. In, um, in uh, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. The cure to covetousness is contentment. You can't tempt somebody who's content. Man, if you're content with everything you have, how can you tempt that person? Everything that you have is more than what you need, and you're thankful for what you have. Let me read this. It says, When we approach Christianity as consumers, rather than seeing it as a comprehensive way of life, an interpretive set of uh, beliefs and values, Christianity just becomes just one more brand that we consume, along with the Gap, Apple, Starbucks, to express identity. And the demotion of Jesus Christ from Lord to label means to live as a Christian no longer carries an expectation of obedience and good works, but rather a perpetual consumption of Christian merchandise and experiences. Music, books, t-shirts, conferences, jewelry, you name it. So like we say we're a Christian because we either towed a Bible or because we got a shirt that says AV 1611 or we've been to how many, we've been to the Red Hot Preaching Conference and we've been to this. That doesn't make you a Christian. A lot of us are defining our lives for what we're consuming in this Christian world rather than putting value where we ought to. Minimalism is biblical. It starts with contentment. Um, Matthew 6, 25, it says, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? So the Bible's saying, listen, you got to eat you got to drink, and you've got to put on raiment. But don't take so much thought that that becomes your life. Your life is consistent on what you wear, what you eat, how you live, how many friends you got. Your life is what you're putting value into. Uh, Luke 12, uh, 33, it says, Sell that you have, give alms, and provide for yourself bags with wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, or where moth corrupteth. So here's the solution. Point number one, be content with your things. And I won't read this. Well, let's read. Let's read it. I don't. Know, I don't know where I started, Jake. But give me a couple, three minutes, three four minutes. I'll be done. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with what things as you have. For he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The solution is be content with your things. Number one. Number two, be be content with where God has you. Uh, Philippians four eleven. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Number three, be content with your wages. Luke three fourteen. And the soldiers uh, likewise demanded of him, saying, What shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Be content with what you're making. Everyone's always trying to make so much more money, way more than they ever need to live on, live way above their means. Number four, be content with your home and family. Exodus 2.21, and Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. Conclusion, owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. You can break the chains of consumerism. You can get out of this thing that this rat race is throwing at you, and really it's a game they're playing, and it's a game they're playing to control you. But you can break it by doing three things. Choose not to play the game. Choose not to be indebted to anyone. And choose to invest in people rather than things. If you love people and use things instead of the opposite, love people and use things because the opposite never works. If you're using people and loving things, that's just not going to work out. But that's how the majority of the world operates. And we're going to finish with this. Go to uh, turn your Bible to uh, Colossians 3.12. write this one down Colossians 3 12 it says this put on therefore as the elect of God that's us holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering where's the and no that's not the verse I wanted 
Where is the verse? Um, Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Anybody know where that is? Or can maybe you can Google it really quick. Oh, I said 12. Okay, sorry, 2. Colossians 3, 2. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate that. Set your affection. So the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I love my wife. It's easy to know. My treasure is with my wife. My treasure is with my children. They have my heart. My wife has my heart. My kids have my heart. I hope when they get older they could say, I know daddy has my heart. Hey, this world, maybe I don't trust so-and-so. I don't trust this. I don't trust that. But I know my daddy has my heart. The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. Set your affection, there's your heart, on things above, watch this, not on things on the earth. You know what Christians do? They think that that verse says, oh, just don't make, you can have affection in both world and heaven. Just make sure that your affection is more here than it is there. That's not what the verse says. Read it again. It says, set your affection on things above, winning souls, praying, reading, glorifying God not on things of the earth. That means don't make that your treasure. Don't let the world have your heart. Don't give it any affection. Not to make sure it's, un, it's, it's more here and not here. It means forsake it. Forget about it. Don't let, we have to use things. We have to eat, drink. We have to put on clothes. But don't put your value in those things. Set all your affection on things above. And people are going to know if you're his disciples because if you love people, Guess what? When someone tries to talk crap about your friends, you know what you're going to do? No, no, no. That's my, my treasure is on things above. My affection's on things above. And I believe that they're saved. I believe that they're, they're going, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you sway me. You don't start loving the brand name of Christianity that you're willing to do whatever your friends are saying or loving, you know, what this world is trying to push on you because your affection is set here. It's not set there. And nothing will sway you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for these preachers, Lord, and the honor it is to stand with these men of God. And Lord, I love you so much, and I thank you, Lord, that there's people here that love you too. And Lord, I pray you take these messages. Lord, let us think about them throughout the week, that it might be a help to your saints. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.